This video is all about engraving glass using lasers. I did a video on engraving glass a while back and it's the best video on the topic today. But it's been a year and a half now, so I decided I'll make a new one with whatever I learned since then. Also, the older video just talked about dyed lasers and in this video, I'll show you how to engrave glass using a diode, a CO2 and a fiber laser. Welcome to Melopine Lasers, let's get started. Here is the TLDR version. You get a plain glass, clean it with some acetone or alcohol. If you have a diode laser, apply a coat of black spray paint or acrylic paint evenly. You can also use black cardstock. Make sure it makes the glass opaque. If you have a fiber laser, place your glass on top of a metal plate and engrave it. If you have a CO2 laser, you can engrave directly. Here's the speed and power for the different lasers. I'll share the speed and power for different watt lasers of each type later in the video. These are approximate ranges. You should run a power scale test to get the best settings for your laser. Once you're done, clean the glass using water or thinner depending on what paint you used and you're good to go. I have included chapters to make it easier for you to navigate through the video. Now, let's get into the details. Laser engraving glass creates micro fractures on the glass surface, giving it a white frosty look. So you'll have areas with the frosty look or without. However, if you're using a fiber laser, you'll get a black engraving. There are two types of images you can engrave on glass. The first one is the plain black and white images like logos. The second one is grayscale images like photographs. For the first type, try to get an image with good contrast and detailing. If your image is smaller than what you need it to be, right click on the image and click trace image. Hit OK and you'll get the vector form. You can now enlarge it as much as you want. For images like these, you need to select the threshold mode in the layer settings window that pops up when you double click the layer name. If you want to engrave photographs, you'll need a diode or a CO2 laser. Make sure you remove the background or use an image with a light background. Also increase the brightness and contrast of your photo a bit to remove too much detail. You would be getting white marks on glass so you need to invert your image and make it negative so that the white areas in your image get engraved. For photographs on glass, do not use the grayscale mode. Use Jarvis or ordered mode. I would recommend ordered mode. You might see some pattern in your engraving in some rare cases, but I get really good results when I use this mode. The dots are spaced evenly, so there is less chance of the glass cracking. Now, when it comes to line spacing, it's best to keep it low. If you go too high, the micro fractures will be too close together, which can crack the glass. I use a line spacing of 0.1 mm, which is 254 dpi. This gives a nice balance between quality, engraving time and structural integrity. Let me also tell you about two tools I use for images. One is ImageR website. It's a cool tool to prepare your images for laser engraving. Like this background removal tool where you upload your image and it does a good job of removing the background. For image processing, you upload your image, set the size and resolution and select the material algorithm and it will give you the processed photo. Now, when you use a processed image in Lightburn, turn the pass through toggle on in layer settings. Also. Do not resize the image in Lightburn if you are using a processed image. Another tool you can use for images is laserpix.com. They have a ton of images prepared for laser engraving. You can filter these based on laser type, material or algorithm. To get a good engraving, your glass needs to be really clean. You can use soap to clean it and wash it under water. The edges can be sharp, so make sure you don't cut your hands. You can also use rubbing alcohol and give it a nice rub. Give your meat a good old rub. <laughs> yeah, boy. To make sure it's really clean. After you are done, wipe it with a clean cloth. Also make sure you don't touch the glass surface after cleaning. This can leave fingerprints or smudges on it. You can use a cloth or pick it up by the sides. CO2 lasers can directly engrave glass. So if you have a CO2 laser, you can skip this step. If you have a diode or fiber laser, you need a transfer medium. If you want to know why, 
I'll explain it at the end of the video. For a diode laser, there are several transfer mediums you can use. You can use black tempera paint, black acrylic paint, black spray, cold galvanizing compound, or black cardstock. You can even use the black suit coming off of a candle as a transfer medium. For a fiber laser, you'll need a metal sheet, preferably steel. Aluminum doesn't work well. When it comes to applying the coating, you need to make sure you apply an even coat. This will give you a nice even engraving. Getting a good coat with tempera paint is difficult, but if you use a sponge brush, it's easier to get an even coat with tempera paint. For acrylic paint, a regular brush would do the trick. You could also put some paint on the glass and then place another glass piece on top of it and slide it to spread the paint. Now, here is a unique method. You light a candle and then hold the glass over the flame and let the black soot collect on the glass. You need to collect the fine soot particles. If you are using black spray paint or cold galvanizing compound, which is nothing but zinc spray, give it an even spray. Start spraying outside your glass and cross over completely to the other side. If you stop at the edge, the coat thickness will be more at the edges. When it comes to sprays, I get good results with chalkboard black paints. Once you have your transfer medium on, wait for them to dry till they are dry to touch. Do not leave them to dry for too long. If you wait too long, the results might not be good and it would be difficult to remove the paint after engraving. If you want to use the cardstock method, all you need to do is cut a piece of cardstock to cover your engraving area and then place your glass on top of the cardstock. Just make sure there is no gap between them. For a fiber laser, you take your steel sheet, place it on the work bed and then place your glass on top. If you want to know how this works, I'll explain it later in the video. After the paint dries, you need to run a power scale test to determine the best speed and power setting for your laser. If you want to learn how to make the power scale test pattern on light burn, I have a video on it. I'll link it in the description. You could also use the test pattern generator tool in Lightburn or you could download the test file that I linked in the description and modify it to suit your machine. Here are the speed and power settings I used for my different machines. You can use these as a starting point for your test. You can pause the screen or take a screenshot. I've also linked a cool calculator that I made in the description. You can use it to calculate the speed and power setting for your setup if you have the settings someone else used. It works like this. You enter the power of the machine that the other person used. Then you enter the power percentage they used and also the speed. Here there is no unit for speed. So you need to understand that the unit of the answer you get would be the same as that of the reference you used. Now in the last field, you type in the maximum power of your laser in watts and click calculate and you'll get the speed and power you could use on your laser to get a similar result. Now, hear me out. I have this free weekly newsletter that you should definitely sign up to if you're into lasers. It's like a mini magazine full of laser stuff, read by thousands each Monday. No fluff, just really cool laser insights. And for the deep divers, there's my lasers and light burn course. It's all about boosting your skills. Check out the links in the description and let's level up together. Also tell me what's the one thing about lasers you wish you knew more about. Your answers will help me tailor future content and newsletters to your interests. So this is how your test pattern would look like on glass. Go for a speed and power that gives an even white frosty engraving with no flakes that can chip off. If you have several boxes that look the same, Go for the one that has the highest speed. The reason is, when you engrave at a slow speed, the duration for which the laser beam is at a spot on the glass is longer and it can heat up the glass. This has two consequences. One is the engraving will start chipping off and the other is that the glass can break. So try to keep the speed high or the power low. On a fiber laser, if you use high speed settings, you get black engraving and if you use low speed settings, you'll get deep frosty engraving. For example, on my 20 watt fiber, 
I get good black engraving at 400 mm per second, 100% power and 100 kHz frequency. And I get white frosty engraving at 50 mm per second speed, 100% power and 100 kHz frequency. However, be careful when using the low speed settings as it can break your glass. Once you have the speed and power figured out, you can load your glass onto the workbed. You have two options here. You can either engrave directly on top of the glass or flip and place the side with paint facing down. If you think the coat is uneven, you can always flip the glass, keep the painted side facing down and engrave through the clear side of the glass. The laser will pass through the glass and engrave the side with paint. If you do this, make sure you mirror your design before engraving so that it's the right way up once it's done. You need to mirror the design for fiber lasers as well since you would be engraving on the underside of the glass. This means you need to set the focus at the bottom surface of the glass. For example, if you are engraving a 5mm thick glass, you should set the focus 5mm lower than the top of the glass or simply focus on your workbed or whatever you have under the glass. Also, do not place your workpiece on a wooden bed because that will give you smoke stain on the engraving. You could either raise the glass on some blocks or use a honeycomb bed. Coming to air assist, if you have one, use it but only at very low pressure. This will help keep the glass cool. You can also engrave glass without an air assist. Just don't use very high power settings. If you are on a CO2 laser, you can directly engrave on the top surface of the glass, place it on the workbed and hit go. If you are engraving photos on a dyed laser, it's best to engrave with the painted surface facing up. Once you are done engraving, wait a bit for the glass to cool down before you pick it up. You can use paint thinner or water to remove the paint based on what paint you used. You can use rubbing alcohol if there are smoke stains and you are good to go. If you are engraving photographs on a diode laser, it's best to keep the black paint on. It will give you a better contrast. If you are using a fiber laser, there would be a bit of smoke stain which can be easily wiped off with some rubbing alcohol. You can use these techniques to engrave bottles or mirrors. Mirror engraving is a bit different. I have a video on it, you can check that out. If you want to engrave bottles, I also happen to have a video on that as well. So do check those out if you want. If you ask how laser engraving works in general, laser beams carry a ton of energy. And when these laser beams interact with the molecules on the surface of the material, a ton of heat is produced which can have various effects based on the material. It can vaporize, get burnt or undergo a structural change. In the case of glass, the beams from a diode or fiber laser pass right through without interacting with the material and therefore we need to do something to make the beam interact with the glass. The most common and effective way to do this is to coat the glass with paint. Now the question comes, what color of paint should you use? The answer is black. The reason is that black things appear black because it absorbs all the light that falls on it. Which means it will absorb a blue diode laser beam and transfer the heat to the glass surface. Let me show this with an example. I have a white balloon, a black one, a blue one, green and a red balloon. In each case, I'll point a blue laser at it from the same distance. Let's see what happens. I'm using a piece of glass to make sure all the balloons are at the same distance. You see the black one was the first to pop and the white one took forever. I had to use my knife. This is because white absorbs energy from blue light much slower than the other colors. In the case of fiber laser beams, which are invisible, even black paint does nothing. Which is why we use a metal plate. 
we place the glass on top of the metal sheet and when the fiber laser engraves the metal sheet, tiny hot metal particles are ejected from the surface and these particles engrave the bottom surface of the glass. This gives you a black engraving on glass when you engrave with a fiber laser. So that's about it. If you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Also put your suggestions in the comments below and subscribe. Yeah, subscribe, do that. Thank you so much for watching the video. See you in the next one.